Hello, we are now in module three of the incident management certification training. Module three is about organizations and people. In this, the exam syllabus is the following. We need to understand the roles and competences of the practice, particularly describe the responsibilities of the key roles of this practice. One, the incident manager, and also the other roles involved in incident management. Also, understand how to position the practice within the organization structure of the service provider organization. Therefore, by the end of this topic or module, you will be able to identify competencies required for all incident management activities and relevant roles in the organization. Also explain organization solutions for the incident management practice. We begin with understanding the competency model. Here we see the LACMT competency model of ITIL. L is leader, A administrator, C coordinator or communicator, M is the modules and methods and techniques expert, T is the technical expert. The leader is the one who makes decisions, delegates, oversees other activities, provides incentives and motivation and evaluates outcomes. Administrators, assign and prioritize tasks, do the record keeping, ongoing reporting, and initiate basic improvements. Coordinators or communicators coordinate between multiple parties, maintain communications between stakeholders, and run awareness campaigns. Methods and techniques expert, design and implement work techniques, document procedures, consult on processes, perform work analysis, and continual improvement. The technical expert provides technical or subject matter expertise and conducts expertise-based assignments. The ITIL practice guides, including the incident management practice, do not describe the practice management roles such as practice owner, practice lead, or the practice coach. They actually focus on the specialist roles specific to each practice. The structure and naming of each role may differ from organization to organization. So any roles defined in ITIL should not be treated as mandatory or even recommended. Also remember, Roles are not job titles because one person can take on multiple roles and one role can be assigned to multiple people as well. These roles are described in the context of processes and activities. And as we just noted, each role is characterized with a competency profile based on the LACMT competency model. As you know, a role may require multiple competencies. And so this competency model is used in the order of importance listing the most important first and then the less important later on. For example, if it is an LCT profile, which means L or leadership is the most important competency, whereas T, technical expertise, is the least important competency. However, all codes, all the three codes, that is LC and T, are important enough. But the other roles, which were not there in LCT, such as A and M, are not required in this role whatever that role is. So therefore the model helps to understand the high level requirements of candidates to plan their professional development and form effective teams. We are now looking at certain roles for the service incident management practice. We have the incident manager first. In many organizations, the incident manager is performed by a dedicated person, sometimes under the incident manager job title. In some other organizations, the responsibilities of an incident manager are taken by the person or team responsible for the configuration item, the service or product with which the incident is associated. Therefore, this person may be the resource owner, a service owner, or a product owner. This role is typically responsible for the coordination of uh, incident handling, in the organization or in a specific area, such as the territory, product, technology, or depending on the organization design. Uh, also responsible for coordinating manual work with incidents, especially those involving multiple teams. Also monitoring and reviewing the work of teams that handle and resolve incidents. Then uh, ensuring sufficient awareness of the incidents and their status across the organization. Conducting regular incident reviews and initiating improvements of the incident management practice the incident models and the incident handling procedures. Last but not the least, developing the 
organization's expertise in the processes and methods of the incident management practice. And you need to look at the LACMT competency model and think about which competencies from these five are needed for these responsibilities. In general, we can say the CMAT can be treated as a generic competency profile for the incident management roles. But again, these can be varied based on organization's specific responsibilities in each role. Which means the C for coordination would be the most important for the incident manager, followed by the M methods and techniques expert, and then followed by A, which is the administrator, and then lastly, the T, the technical expert. Therefore, the L is not seen in the generic competency profiling for incident manager roles. However, these are not mandatory. You may create the competency profile based on specific needs of your own organization, while keeping in mind the CMAT generic competency profile for incident manager roles. We now have the major incident manager. So here we see that on the, in some cases, organizations may introduce an additional role of the major incident manager or MIM. This role has similar responsibilities to the incident manager, but focuses ex exclusively on major incidents. This role becomes the main point of contact and coordination during major incidents. The MIM usually has wider authority and may have dedicated resources for major incident management. Again, for the MIM, the CMAT generic profile can be used. Next, we have an activity for you to think on yourself. In a classroom session, you might have other colleagues to work with on this activity. What you have to do here is identify the key skills and competencies for the incident manager management roles, not just the incident manager role only, but there are other roles as well, which I will mention shortly, and also suggest the most suitable roles or teams for your environment, and also discuss possible challenges of assigning people to the practice, meaning how do you really assign specific people to the specific roles? While we have looked at uh, the major incident manager role, particularly under the incident manager role, but there may be other roles, uh, this is where I would highly recommend that you study table 4.2 in the incident management practice guide. You will see a table 4.2 explaining the various uh, um, roles. It doesn't go into detail explaining each role. However, it uh, allows you to uh, briefly understand what roles are possible in each step of the incident management processes and also what specific skills they would need. So we have other roles such as technical specialist and user when the incident is being detected they need to understand the service design, resource configuration, business impact of events and symptoms. When it goes to incident registration, we can have the incident manager, the service desk agent, and the technical specialist do this. They need to have good knowledge of the IT service management tools and procedures. Then we, when it comes to incident classification, then the incident manager, the service desk agent, and a technical specialist could be involved. They need to understand the service design, resource configuration, business impact, and also have a good knowledge of requirements and commitments for incident resolution, and also good knowledge about incident models. When it comes to incident diagnosis, the supplier and a technical specialist will be involved. They will need a good understanding of the service design, resource configuration, and business impact, and knowledge of incident models, diagnostic tools, methods, and also some analytical skills. Then when it comes to incident resolution, the supplier, the technical specialist, also the user will be involved who will need to understand the methods and procedures required for incident resolution. And finally, during incident closure, we can have the incident manager, the service desk agent, and the technical specialist involved. They need to understand the service design resource configuration and business impact 
good knowledge of the requirements and commitments for incident resolution. So do refer to the table 4.2 in the incident management practice guide ebook that you will have access to. Remember, um, we will be having another recording in your e-learning uh, access, a brief recording about how do you access your own uh, practice guide and also how do you book your exam as well. And do refer to that also. So the, the steps that I just outlined with the possible roles and the skills needed uh, were for the incident handling and resolution process. But you might recall it, we also have the periodic incident review process in which we can have the incident manager, the product owner, the service owner, and the supplier involved in the first step of incident review and the incident records analysis. And then in the second step of incident model improvement initiation, we can have the incident manager, the product owner, and the service owner. And finally, in the incident model update communication, we will have the incident manager, the product owner, the service disk agent, and possibly the service owner. In terms of skills, they remain the same as we listed for the previous process of um, incident handling and resolution. 